by tuning for it. Almost forgot this, baby. I apologize if that hurt anyone's ears. You're going to clear some bad shit today. Yeah. So we're on Mantra 31. If you haven't heard of my book, it is on Amazon. 33 Masters, Sentient Mantras, and Prayer. Mantra number 31 is, From the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal, transmute, and facilitate my highest and greatest good with the ease the divine envisioned for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now. This is the sigil for it right here, the sigil for this mantra. Before I begin, I'm going to share my Facebook post. I would be laughing right now if I'm live on the okay i'm not live on the killer witch profile but i would be tripping if i was because i've done that before i went live on the youtube killer witch profile once and i started reading my mantras and my fans went there and they were like hell of listening but i loved it you know i didn't really mind because uh, my musical fans know that i do this you know for my own sanity, so sometimes they join in too. In fact, some of them have bought in this book and they use it. So what was I doing? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So the music that you guys hear, I own the rights for. It's meditation music I have not released, but it exists. It exists. It's there. Um, let me see if I can. Everyone get ready. We're going to launch those ascension vibes right now. We're going to welcome in that new earth. We're going to pull light into our DNA. We are going to change reality as we know it by tapping into the God self. Because all things are God. It's just they don't remember they're God. There's only one mind. There's only one being. And that is God. God thinking he's not God. Humans in a nutshell. Here we go. Close your eyes and listen to my voice. Not so much my voice, but the information. And repeat after me. From the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal, transmute, and facilitate my highest and greatest good 
with the ease the divine envision for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now. These aren't just regular mantras, and my hand is like this for a reason. I am beaming energy at the planet. I'm beaming energy at us. If you want, you too can put your hand out like this and feel the energy coming out of your hand chakra. We all have chakras, the palm of our hands. We shoot energy out of these and take an energy. In this period of time, we are going to project the most highest, the most deliciousness, the most divine energy we can tap into, the one, the only, the true source of all creation, creator of all universes and the mother of all souls. Some call it God, some call it source, some call it spirit. Doesn't matter what name you call it, its love is infinite and is present and accessible to us at any given time, because that's the promise in the Bible and Jesus' words himself. God's plan for each and every single being, all the cosmoses, all realities, all dimensions, God's only promise and plan for is everlasting love, everlasting peace, prosperity and happiness. There is no ifs, there is no buts. This is all God can do. The rest is up to us. We just have to tap into it, vibrate with it, resonate it. Take it in like food, like the air we breathe. From the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal, to transmute, and facilitate my highest and greatest good with the ease the divine envisioned for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now, from the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal, transmute, and facilitate my highest and greatest good with the ease, the divine and vision for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now. From the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal transmute and facilitate my highest and greatest good with the ease, the divine vision for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now. From the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal, transmute, and facilitate my highest and greatest good with the ease, the divine vision for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now. From the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal, transmute, and facilitate my highest and greatest good with the ease of divine vision for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now.
If you cannot follow along because I'm speaking it too fast and I'm in the mood, just affirm the last part. Come into being right here, right now. When we say this, we are speaking to God. We are speaking to the ascended self. We are speaking to the future. We are speaking to the divine plan. We are speaking to the ultimate plan, okay? Bliss, harmony, prosperity, peace, love, and unity for all. It is written. And everything that is written in that book, that letter from the Most High, always comes true. From the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal, transmute, and facilitate my highest and greatest good with the ease the divine envisioned for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now. From the darkest corners of my soul, I activate the love of the ascended self to heal, transmute, and facilitate my highest and greatest good with the ease the divine envisioned for all creation, including myself, come into being right here, right now. Come into being right here, right now. Lord God, our ascended self, our original form, the only mind that is all mine, Come into being right here, right now. Come into being right here, right now. Get it on Amazon, or you can tune in to replay, or, you know, whenever I do go live, and we're only like, what, two more mantras away from it being complete? And then I will just be picking random pages from the book. <clears throat> now let us begin A Course in Miracles. This is completely new for me. I never really do A Course in Miracles. But I feel like it's necessary because I've reached a point in my life to where we need to go higher. So higher we will go. How are we going to go higher? By tapping into that Christ consciousness. We're going to tap into the Christ consciousness with my book, and we're going to tap into it with the Course in Miracles. You stand with me and be patient as I get ready. So today's A Course in Miracles is Lesson 151. All things are echoes of the voice for God. No one can judge on partial evidence. That is not judgment. It is merely an opinion based on ignorance and doubt. The seeming certainty is but a cloak for the uncertainty it would conceal. I like that. It would conceal. It needs irrational defense because it is irrational and its defense seems strong, convincing, and without doubt because of all the doubting underneath. So we cannot make a decision or judgment with partial evidence, okay? We have to have all the evidence, okay? I mean, you must seek to know as much as you need to know, as much as you want to know. So if we don't know it all and we don't have all the evidence and we don't know, how can we judge and why do we still judge? We should not, we probably shouldn't judge. You do not seem to doubt the world you see. 
You do not really question what is shown you through the body's eyes, nor do you ask why you believe it. Do you even ask why you believe the things you believe? Do you have any evidence to believe the things that you believe? That's just something for you guys to ponder about. That's why I love A Course in Miracles. So do you guys even question why you have your beliefs? Is there any evidence for you guys to have those specific beliefs? If not, it's time to get rid of them and believe in something new and better. Even though you learned a long while since your senses do deceive, our senses do deceive totally. Our heart deceives us at times. You know, when we get pissed off or in the moment, our feelings can deceive us. We can be led to make irrational choices that come from a place of doubt. Even though we've learned a long while since our senses did deceive that you believe them to the last detail, which they report is even stranger. When you pause to recollect how frequently they have been faulty witnesses indeed, why would you trust them so implicitly? Why not? Why but because of underlying doubt which you would hide with show of certainty? I don't really understand that, but... Can this be judgment? How can you judge? Your judgment rests upon the witnesses that your senses have to offer, but we cannot trust our senses. For example, our eyes don't see the etheric. We have to tune in to see the etheric. Our ears don't hear the voice of God. We have to tune in to hear the voice of God. I don't know if anyone's ever, you know, experienced that, but we always have to tune in to listen to something. Okay, because our senses are not to be trusted, they're deceived. Since the day we are born, we're being told what is real and what is not. So we cannot trust our senses, but I know who we can and what we can trust, and that's God. How else do you judge the world you see? You place pathetic faith in what your eyes and ears report. You think your fingers touch reality and close upon the truth. This is awareness that you understand and think more real than what is witnessed by the eternal voice for God himself. Can this be judgment? You often begin urged to refrain from judging, not because it is right to be withheld from you. You cannot judge. You merely can believe the ego's judgment. So our true self does not judge. That's why everything hurts, because we're not really judging it. But also, we hurt from judging it, too. See, we hurt because what we're believing and what we've done is not of our true nature. That is from the ego's nature. The ego is bent on survival and making you forget about God because it cannot see nor recognize God. The ego doesn't even recognize itself. It can't because it just goes blaming everyone. It can't even acknowledge that everything is a reflection of itself. It has completely edged God out. That's why it's ego. ego. And if you look at evil and live, they're the same word but backward. So to be evil is to do the opposite of living. Very much the same thing. Egos of a very similar nature. So all the things that the ego fears, all the judgments that it has are usually false and non-existent. It can't really affect you unless you allow it to infect you. It guides your senses carefully to prove how weak you are. The ego is constantly reminding us of our mortality, our habits and addiction to the temporary, the temporal. 
the fear of losing our life or the fear of no one loving us, for example. It does everything it can to, to show us that we are somehow being punished or full of sin. But that's not true because God don't see sin. God don't even see sin within us. When God sees us, he sees himself. This thing it speaks of would you yet defend and tells you it tells you is yourself. You are not the ego, okay? I promise you. You are not this mortal coil. You are not flesh and bone. You are beyond it. You are God in the flesh living a completely new life taking a new path and direction not just that but we have Jesus within us too because you know Jesus is not just human you know it was God and human becoming one God having a human experience and when all things leave the planet it imprints onto the life stream of all creation. So whatever Jesus did, some say he died. I personally don't believe he died. I believe he transmuted his flesh. He merged his soul, you know, his aspect of God, the God, you know, God that was in him. That became one with his flesh and he overcame death, which is very hard for humans to do. But there are lots of documentations of humans doing it it's just not many humans have done it now and even then maybe they still are doing it but we perceive it as a funeral or a death or a tragedy we forget that we live in a, a multi-universe a multi-dimension nothing is ever really dead it just appears as if it's dead but even had even christ has said i will always be with you will always be you know by your side how could that be how could it be maybe replay the video watch a little bit because all things are the voice of god so the ego can only see the bad shit it can't see the good stuff okay but your spirit, the part of you that is beyond flesh and bone, that can see the good stuff. That's able to tune in and see the etheric world and to hear the etheric voice of God, the etheric voice of angels. You know, the ego can do that too, but it tunes into the lower realms and, you know, the bad things that give us bad ideas. The things that like to use us, you know, or influence us to make bad decisions. But see, none of that can affect you unless you allow it, which is why you must develop certain practices and exercises to recalibrate your frequency and electronic signals in your brain and throughout your energy body and physical body. Hear not its voice, the witness it sends to prove to you it's evil and it's false. And will speak of certain to you what it does not know. Your faith in the ego is blind. And it does nothing but share doubt about the Lord. Yet you must learn to doubt the evidence the ego presents you with. And you can only do this by recognizing your true self, that you are a child of God, a voice of God, a representative of God. God in the flesh, a part of God, he gave up to become something that is you. The lessons that we face every day in life, they're all meant to bridge the gap between illusions and the truth. You know, we're being reminded of who we really are. We may get sent to horrible places. We may 
face to face with horrible people. But if none of that happened, how would we know who we truly are? How would we become who we are now? See, the universe is alive and the stimulation, this matrix is alive. And ultimately it serves only one master and that is God. And if God is within all of us, then technically it is serving us. But a part of us, the part of us that we have identified with because of all the illusions and gunk we've been fed throughout our, our life, that will convince you otherwise that everything is against you, that there is something wrong with you, that maybe you have underlining, you know, accommodations. Like, for example, I have, you know, a couple of underlining mental health conditions that if I didn't have them, I would not be on this path because this path helps me accommodate for them. See, but that's my lesson. That lesson reminds me of where I'm going and what I'm overcoming and what I'm facing, which is myself. And it's the same with all of you guys. We are overcoming and facing ourselves, the parts of us that we really are not the parts of us that we are shedding, purging, and transmuting from, making peace with. <clears throat> know that this part of you, the Christ and God within you, will remove all the illusions, all the pain, disaster, suffering, and loss. See, do you ever stop to think that there's a being up there who has my best interests. There is a part of me that loves me so much that even if I were to die, it would take care of me. And even if I were to be saved, I would know that that force, that love up there, constantly at work. How many of your death experiences have you guys had? And some of you say there is no God. Tell you what, God loves us so much, you will let us make our own decisions and walk our own paths, even if they are bad for us, because those paths are going to remind us who we are. Some people are going to feel like shit walking down the path that's not for them. They're going to blame the path and not see the blessing that they're being reminded of who they are and who they're meant to be. It's all about how you look at things. If you're looking at things like they're against you, you know, from the survival mindset, from the ego mindset, if you're looking at things from that way, how can you prosper? How can you have peace? How can you see the kingdom of God if you believe you can be attacked? You know, in the kingdom of God, nothing can, at nothing can attack you. Even if your flesh was to be attacked, your spirit is unharmed. Your spirit can feel things and carry feelings, carry information, vibration. But it's never truly harmed. You think you're being harmed because it feels unpleasant. And if you're feeling unpleasant, then it's time to walk in a different direction. It's time to believe in a new belief. So there is a, a lot of reading to do with this, of course, of, of course, the miracles. I suggest you guys to tap into it because, of course, the miracles is always reminding me, you know, that all is God. There's only one being, and that being is God. And no matter what happens in this world of illusions, there is only God. And that's our salvation. That's our deliverance. The world unites with us and accepts our holy thoughts, which heaven has corrected and made pure. I know that heaven's in the future. All mistakes have been corrected. Know that when you make a mistake, God will correct it. And you can correct it with God. You can either move out of the way and let God correct it, or you can do the most awesomest thing ever. You correct it with God and have fun. And then remember that you are his child, his likeness, his equal. 
his ambassador, pretty much. You know, we're here to do the work of the Lord, which is, you know, maintain peace and speak the truth that God's only plan and promise for us is love, everlasting love, everlasting peace, prosperity and harmony for all. And people may seek to disrupt it, but we remember God has a plan. We may be called into action, but always remember that peace and unity Harmony, everlasting love, all that good stuff. That's the promise of the Lord. It's going to come no matter what. Whether we sit in silence and do nothing. Whether we protest or not. Because let me tell you something. The evil of the world is clueless to know that every time it attacks us, it's really attacking itself. Haven't you noticed? Every time our government has done something recently, it has shot itself in the foot. That's because we're living in God's world. Governments like to think they're living in the government's world, but they forget. They forget that the spirit of God is in the people. And there is only one master, and that master is God, the universe. The creator of all universes and mother of souls. That's the true master. That's what everything serves, even if it doesn't want it. Even if it doesn't want to. It's only one master, and it's your true self, the ascended being, the most high, the original one, the only mind, alpha and the omega. Let me pull the card for today, and then I will wrap this video up. You know, I really hope whoever is here enjoyed it. I hope you come back for more and go on the replay. God was busy with that one, don't you think? This is what Jesus has to say. This is one of my favorite decks. Jesus is one of my most favorite teachers. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So whoever reads this, whoever participated, know that. Know that your faith always saves you. What you believe in will save you. So if you're believing in the bad, you know, it may save you, it may harm you or remind you. You know, to go in a different direction or do a different thing. But no, whatever you believe in will save you. If you're going to believe in the good shit, it's going to save you. If you're going to believe in the bad shit, that's going to save you too. But you're going to feel pretty horrible at first until you realize this is not meant for me. I must use my faith in a different way. Because no matter what, our faith is saving us. No matter what we believe in, it's serving us in some type of way. So start believing in the good stuff. I love you guys. I'll try and come back, you know, later or tomorrow. I feel like it's very important now I return, you know, to the platform. While the chaos of the world is, you know, doing its thing. I'm sure that if enough people tune in with me we could probably do something but i know that one spark is enough to re-spark thousands love you guys have a wonderful day wonderful evening on other parts of the world just remember just remember the most strongest most powerful force of all creation the observer, the watcher, the one mind within us all is constantly, constantly there holding us, loving us, even when we don't believe that it is. Because it has a promise, that one promise I reminded you guys of. And it's not going away, no matter what. It's always available. Your faith has saved you.
Now go in peace.